Hey, in this video, we're gonna take a look at a 120 watt solar panel uh, from Flex Solar. This is a obviously a portable solar panel that's designed to work with your portable power stations. And this particular one I found interesting and I wanted to review because not only does it come with a variety of accessories and connector types, which is really helpful depending on the type of power station you have, um, but it also has one particular spec that I haven't seen on any of the other panels that I've looked at uh, on the market. And I think this particular feature has the potential to be kind of a game changer in rapid charging your power station. We'll find out if it works. Stay tuned. All right, so let's find out what this panel comes with. All right, so right out of the gate, it comes with a whole variety of connector types. Now this is one of those things I did not expect it to come with, but this is a you know a fairly low end budget. I think it's a 20 amp uh, PWM charge controller, so it's not an MPPT charge controller. So it's designed for smaller projects as you might expect, uh, but it it's already it comes pre-wired uh, with a Anderson connector that goes to the solar panel, and then another Anderson connector that goes to an adapter cable that I'll show you in just a second. All right, so we got our uh, user guide. This has a two year warranty on it, by the way, uh, but so this is kind of cool. If you needed to charge a battery in the field, or if you just have one of kind of a DIY system where you're using a car battery uh, to um, to charge with your solar panel, um, you can do that. Now, as I said, this is not a very expensive one, uh, but it should get the job done uh, for some small projects like uh, either charging your car battery or using a little, you know, if you're doing a little RVing and you've, you've built a little DIY system, this would be an easy way to do that. And it comes with everything you need except the battery. The panel actually slides out. So you get sort of this outer case and then you have the, the panel itself. So unlike a lot of the competitors in this market, this, this uh, particular cable pouch is just a mesh pouch. So there's no waterproofing around this whatsoever. So it's a little bit less waterproof uh, than some of the other panels that you see on the market. And none of them are completely waterproof. They are water resistant. But if, if the back panel, if this little, this has some USB ports and stuff in it, if this gets wet, uh, you could have a problem. So you definitely don't want to get this uh, this wet. And uh, I've been using this off and on for a couple of weeks uh, to get used to it. And what you can see here is it's got an Anderson connector uh, with a fairly long cable. I think this is probably about an eight foot cable if I had to guess. And uh, it's got a little Anderson pigtail. And then this is one of the adapters. This happens to be the eight millimeter adapter that uh, works with the Jackery and the uh, Opus 600 that I recently reviewed. I'll put a, actually if you haven't seen that, I'll put a, a link up there if you wanna go check that out. Um, but this works with a variety of types. So this will also work with a Rock Pals unit. Um, and it's got, as you can see, a whole bunch of different tips. So we got like 10 different tips here that you can connect to this thing. Now, inside the pouch is where things get a little interesting. Instead of just having a standard type A USB port, it's got a coiled cable with an, a hard mounted uh, connector to a type A port. So that's, I don't know, that's kind of interesting. I don't, I don't know if that's a pro, it's, it's definitely not a con, um, but you know, there may be some advantage to that. But here's where that's got a very interesting thing. So you've got another um, quick charge uh, type A port right down here. And I'll try to get you a close up of this so you can see. Uh, but more interesting to me, and this is the thing that I was very interested with this particular panel, is that the Type C port happens to also be a PD 60 watt power delivery uh, port. So if you have the right kind of uh, rated uh, Type C USB cable, you can output up to 60 watts uh, power output from this from this port right here. So that's kind of cool, and that's very unique. So there's a lot of little accessories to make this thing extremely flexible. So that PD 60 watt port really got me thinking, like what else could I do with that? So if you happen to have a power station, like this Opus 600, uh, this comes with a type C 60 watt PD port on it. And the way they typically market it, as I, as I showed in the other video that I did on this guy, is you can hook in the AC adapter uh, on the end piece charger here that gets a maximum of 100 watts. And then you can also hook in a type C uh, from an AC adapter, typically is how it's marketed. And that looks like this. This is a, um, you know, it's got a plug in the back, you plug this in the wall, and then you can plug a type C cable into from here to into there. And you get an additional 
approximately six, 60 watts max. It usually ends up being like 55 or 50, 58, something like that. But that's still a pretty significant increase in your input power if you can use something like this. Now, having just come across this solar panel from Flex Solar that also has a PD 60 watt output, I wondered if I could use that with solar as a, as a supplemental panel. And, and, and also, is there any benefit if I happen to have you know, this, this 120 watt panel, can I just plug an extra USB cable in there? Does it reduce my output coming in from the main? So in other words, is there a net benefit or not to using both connections from one solar panel? And then does it work if I were to use two solar panels with one powering the uh, PD 60 watt port and the other one powering the other uh, usual 100 watt DCN? So uh, let's switch to some outdoor video and let's see what I found. All right, so now I've got the uh, 120 watt flex solar set up. Now I will say that this flex solar panel does not have uh, stand legs on it, like little Velcro uh, detachable stand legs. So I'm actually propping up against something right now to give it a you know realistic angle. But let's try hooking up this 120 watt um, directly uh, without the PD power and find out what kind of input we get. Got the Anderson connector set up and we are getting 85 watts, 86 watts, so 85, 86 watts. But now let's see what happens if I connect this Type-C cable to the PD 60 watt input, because according to the Flex Solar specs, it can handle 60 watts output. So we're obviously not getting the full 60 uh, from this panel, but I'm curious what happens. So we're already up to 115, 118, yeah, so it's kind of bouncing around between 116, 118 watts. So that's pretty cool. So now I've got one from Powerness, which I did a video on. And I've got it coming through the side. And so it's going to max out at whatever it maxes out to. Let's see. If I take the uh, Type-C off, it's going to... Yeah, so I'm getting the same kind of, you know, 81 watts up to 85 watts or so. And now I'm going to plug the second flex solar panel. I'm even blocking part of it with my shadow here. But now I'm getting 135 watts, 137 watts. All right, so that actually worked. That was pretty cool. Um, you can actually kind of fast charge your power station if you have uh, PD power input on that power station. Now, my Jackery 1000, the Explorer 1000, does not have that uh, feature, nor do any of the uh, smaller capacity jackeries, but the new 1500s and 2000 uh, jackeries do have a 60 watt PD input. And on the Rock Pals, like the 300 watt unit that I have, only has a 30 watt PD input, but you can still use it that way. Uh, but the newer or the, the larger ones, uh, I think the 600 watt Rock Pals, or I think it's a 500 watt actually, I think it has a 45 watt PD input, so it still will work on that. So especially if you have a power station that's got 45 watts or 60 watts, that's really where the sweet spot is. That's why I like it with this Opus 600 watt unit. Um, you really get a significant benefit out of that. So what's the downside of this unit? Well, there are a couple things that I that I kind of think are less than ideal. So first of all, you know, I mentioned that the, you know, the cable pouch in the back doesn't have a, a protector uh, that really gives it any protection from uh, splashing or water. And you do run the risk if you get it wet um, of, of damaging the panel. So that's something that uh, you want to keep in mind. Now, a couple of other things that I found is that it doesn't have any grommets uh, for mounting like most of the other panels do, not all of them, so that you can mount these vertically uh, if you want to, or um, or horizontally on top of it, you can tie them down so they don't blow away, uh, that kind of thing. So this one does not have grommets. It has tie downs that are these little nylon loops. Um, those are obviously not as durable as metal grommets, uh, but they will get the job done. The last downside of this panel, and this is probably the biggest issue for me, is that it does not come with any integrated uh, leg stands that you can sort of pop the Velcro out and set this thing up at an appropriate angle that might be slightly adjustable. Um, this is, you know, this is one of those things that I think it'll depend on your particular use case, whether or not that's an issue for you. In most cases, I think you're able to find some things to prop this up against, whether it be prop it up against the, you know, the side of your car, uh, the side of your tent or whatever, whatever it is you're doing. Uh, but you can probably find a way to prop this up or hang it if you want to hang it vertically, or you can just lay it flat if the sun is really high in the sky. I mean, you can get a couple of sticks, I'm sure, and prop this thing up. It is fairly rigid once you unfold it. So... I don't think that's a problem. 
but just be aware it doesn't come with any integrated legs. So at sub $200, uh, it's still a 120 watt panel. The fact that it's got a PD60 watt port on it uh, that you can use, and again, I haven't seen this on any other panels. Now with the Flex Solar, just with the panel by itself, not using any other panels, I could increase the input wattage an additional 30 watts just by connecting the Type-C connector. So I still think it probably caps out maximum at 120 watts, which is about what I was seeing. And I think I was at 118, I think was the highest number I got in that particular uh, test. So you're not gonna get more than you know 118, 120 watts out of this. But still, that's a lot better than 85 watts or significantly better, enough to make a real impact in your charge time. And if you use this as a second panel, uh, then you can get up to, like I said, about 150, maybe 155 uh, watts input, rather than just the 100 that, uh, that Opus 600 takes. And that, in the case of the Opus 600, that makes a difference of, instead of uh, seven and a half hours of uh, charge time, so about four hours. That's a pretty big increase in rapid charging. So something like this is really gonna help you maximize your, your fast charge time when you do have pristine weather conditions uh, for that. So in allowing you to get the most in the shortest amount of time possible. So anyway, I think this is really worth a look if you can live with the fact that it doesn't have its own legs to stand on. Um, and um, you know, if, if you're also into the DIY scene and you wanna hook it up to a lead acid battery or a gel, battery. This also will work uh, with a lithium ion battery as well. You just have to configure it accordingly. Uh, but this this also kind of could be cool to get you out of a to situation where maybe you're out in, you know, national forest land car camping and your car battery is dead for some reason. This would enable you to actually, with if you have the PWM module with you, you could actually charge your car battery from this and uh, potentially get out of a sticky situation. So, it's kind of cool just as an emergency thing, if nothing else, to have that option. Anyway, so I found this thing at just under $200 pretty cool. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you found any of this information helpful. I'll put links in the description below. And um, you know, I'm really curious to find out if you guys have any other uh, panel options that you've explored that you think are pretty cool feature sets uh, that might be interesting to, to people who are watching this video, please put those in the comments below. I'd love to see what else you guys are, are using if you have other options that you think are pretty neat and worth checking out. So that's all I got for you in this video. Thanks for hanging with me all the way to the end. Uh, I do hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have fun out there.